Article 3. Someone have a motion for that? Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move that the town vote to approve Articles 3 through 9 as written in the town warrant, except that the phrases or take any action relative thereto be omitted. Okay, motion made and seconded to approve Articles 3 through 9 as a block. Does anyone object to that? Okay. All those in favor of approving those articles, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Those are approved. All right. <coughs> so now, Article 10, to see if the town will vote pursuant to provisions of General Law, Chapter 44. Four, section 53 E and a half as recently amended and as written in the warrant book who has a motion on this I one do. mr. moderator I move the town vote to approve article 10 as written in the town warrant except that the phrase or take any action relative there to be admitted Second. okay some discussion here If not, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Okay, Article 10 is approved. Article 11, to see if the town will vote to accept the provisions of General Law Chapter 44, Section 53F and three, qu three quarters, as written in the booklet here. Who has a motion on this one? Mr. Moderator, yes. I, move, I move that the town vote to accept the provisions of uh, General Law Chapter 44, Section 53, F3, 4, and establish a special revenue fund to be known as the PEG Access and Cable Related Fund as written in town warrant and further to appropriate the balance of combined cable access accounts at the close of FY17 to be expended by Public Access and Communications Committee with the approval of the Board of Selectmen for cable related purposes. Second. Okay. Some discussion on this one is my question is is peg a is that the official name peg or does peg stand for something here comes sharon public education and government well. okay mr moderator the language of this motion was um formulated by town council um in consultation with brookfield community uh, access, which is known colloquially as Brookfield Community Media. The letters PEG, uh, just for information's sake, stand for Public, Educational, and Governmental. And that is the term that the government documents, including the federal government, use to describe cable access programs nationally. I might add that the reason we are um, Putting this before the town is because we, well, there is a reason given in the bold face underlined. Um, but this is, this is the result of a change of an FCC requirement um, having to do with cable access in Massachusetts. So we, are, we had two choices to do it, and this is the way we chose based on the fact that we are a town organization and not an independent nonprofit, and based on the fact that previously we did have a revolving fund. So this was town council's recommendation and we ran with it. Any other discussion? I should also yeah. point out that the, the, the motion is in the booklet is, is incorrect. The motion that Ms. Coughlin read is the correct motion. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. All right, that's a vote. Article 12, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $15,000 to plow private roads or take any action relative thereto. 
Mr. Moderator? Yes. I motion to pass over with an explanation. Yeah. Second. Second. Okay. So I cause this uh, article to be here for educational purposes. You have already voted for the dollar to plow private roads earlier on the budgeted lines. But each year it comes up about the time the ground freezes that somebody wants a private road plowed. Documentation to the highway department has not been done in time. Um, maintenance on the roads are a concern. And so this is just to make sure that if you're living on a private road and you and your neighbors want it plowed, if it's not been previously plowed, you need to talk to the highway department to make sure that the documentation's in place and that the road's ready to be plowed. Thank you. Okay, motion, motion was made to pass over this article. Any other discussion? Oh, okay. All those in favor of passing over, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Okay. Article 13 was previously that was all right. passed over. Uh, 14, to see if the town will vote to amend chapter 15 of the Personnel Bylaws, Section 2, Mandatory Classification, to include the position of cable studio coordinator or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move that the town vote to amend Chapter 15 of the Personnel Bylaws, Section 2, Mandatory Classifications, to include the position of cable studio coordinator as written in the town warrant. Second. Motion made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? So, Mr. Town Clerk, do you want a standing vote on this? Okay. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. We can declare it unanimous if that helps. Yeah, I want to do 15. Okay, Article 15, to see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 15 of the Personnel Bylaws, Section 2, Mandatory Classification, to include the position of Assistant Treasurer or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator? Yes, ma'am. I move that the town vote to amend Chapter 15 of the Personnel Bylaws, Section 2, Mandatory Classification, to include the position of Assistant Treasurer as written in the town warrant. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on this? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no? No. No. That passes. Um, article 16, it's a citizen petition. Um, it was verified, so if there's any question about that. So I don't know who the citizen is that's going to make the motion, but okay. He's smiling. Okay, uh, James Cook, by the way. Mr. Moderate, I move that we postpone action on this article and have this article placed on the warrant for the fall special town meeting. Second. Um, you can pass over it, but you can't, we can't, um, by a vote here, let me see if I, well, one town council is going to, but I'll, I'll try to say by a motion here, we cannot commit um, the placement of an article on a special town meeting. Um, I'm guessing that, um, you could get the selectmen to commit to it right here if you were we'll put, if we'll, you were we'll to twist their to arms it. a little. Yeah, I'll, um, I'm gonna have to see them afterwards and twist their arms. But <laughs> just the only concern I have, and I'll I'll take them at their word, is that you can't place under state law a citizen's petition article in a special meeting only in an annual. Correct, Mr. Council? You can't do what? Yeah, but you need more signatures. No, you need more you, signatures. You would need something like ten percent of the town. You do. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can we hear? Uh, how about repeating that so we can all hear okay. it, especially I, me? I, again, and the council can correct me. Under, under state law, you only need 10 signatures to place an article on the regular town meeting. You would need 10% of the town's people, registered town voters, to do so at a special. That's all. That's right. But right. We'll, we'll put it on, Jim. Okay. Don't worry. Okay, so the motion is made to pass over this article. Yes. Any other discussion? 
All those in favor of passing over the article, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. We're going on to the next one. Yeah, so 17, 18, we're passed 17, over. 18. 18. Looks like, to me, we're up to 19. Yes. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer of borrow a sum of money to purchase air tanks and protective clothing for the fire department or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move that the town vote to transfer 15000 from stabilization to purchase air tanks and protective clothing for the fire department. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Some discussion on this one. It's a safety thing. That's why we're doing it. It's part of we're the, taking, the oh, 114 900 that we talked about earlier and that it would be returned. Okay. And we're taking money out of stabilization, so I need a two-thirds vote on this. Um, it, oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to ask a question um, of the chief, just something I'm not clear about with the words. The description, it says, some of the current funds were used to comply with safety equipment policy, and I'm not, I'm not sure what equipment was bought to comply with that? Nothing. We had a safety equipment policy for a period of time. It was subsequently revoked because it was an un, basically an unfunded mandate, but that's not the correct phrase because we work for you, so you can mandate whatever you want. Um, but in terms, since it was there wasn't a funding mechanism for most departments. That's why it was revoked. But in terms of the fire department, we already had this account with funds in it. So I didn't really feel it appropriate from a personal liability standpoint to not do this. So we replaced uh, forestry helmets, which were supposed to be replaced every 10 years, and we bought several pairs with more to come of work boots for fighting wildland fires and other duties that don't, don't need the full ensemble that you'd see at a structure fire. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comment? Okay, all those in favor of the transfer of $15,000 for the air tanks and protective uh, clothing, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Okay, it's unanimous. So we got our two thirds. All right. 20, we passed over. Did we pass? No, we're doing. Did we pass over 20? Yes. Okay. That's all I need. Uh, 21. <coughs> to see if the town will vote to transfer a sum of money from the ambulance receipts reserved account to fund the fiscal 2018 emergency squad expense account or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to transfer $40,000 from the ambulance receipt reserved account to fund the fiscal 2018 emergency squad expense account. All right. Any discussion on that? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. All right, 21 is voted. Uh, 22. So See Mr. if the town will vote to transfer a sum of money from the ambulance receipts reserved account to fund the fiscal 2018 emergency squad wages account or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I believe that we should be passing this article over as well because in the 2% discussion, we approved a No, we have to go do this. We'd have to do this. Sorry. Sorry, then I have to read. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> I move that the town vote to transfer $176,400 from the ambulance receipts re reserve account to f fund. Uh, okay, I'm going to correct that in a second. Thank you, Beth to fund the fiscal uh, 2018 emergency squad wages account. So let me reread that because I need to, I need to. I'm sorry, you're good. I, I apologize. Okay, I got, then we're good. 176,400.
Okay. Second. Uh, motion made to transfer 176,400. Any questions on this item? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Okay, that's a vote. Uh, 23, to see if the town will vote to transfer a sum of money from the water surplus account to the new vehicle purchase account or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator, yes. I, I vote that the town, or I moved at the town vote to transfer 39000 from the water surplus account to the new vehicle purchase account. Second. Okay. Any comments, discussion on this one? Yes. Could, could you have the um, water superintendent come up and explain uh, the type of truck you're getting, two wheel, four wheel? What have you just, there's been a lot of discrepancy. I was just wondering what you decided. I, I'll answer that. Um, we've looked at a number of different vehicles and we've getting got pricing on both the two wheel drive, uh, three quarter ton, and a four wheel drive. Um, the requested amount of 39 will give us the ability to make that choice um, between the two and the four. Basically, I think that the four-wheel drive vehicle uh, will best suit the town as it's an emergency vehicle used in emergency situations. We haven't had a two-wheel drive vehicle in the past. I mean, haven't had a four-wheel drive vehicle in the past, but um, I think it's time that we we, we take care of that. As far as any added expenses, uh, there will be uh, added utility co uh, costs in operating in that truck marginally according to the manufacturer's uh, uh, literature. So there's uh, what, what would be added uh, expenses would be changing the differential uh, at 40,000 miles transfer a case at 150,000 miles, and possibly, if you're using the four-wheel drive on a regular basis, uh, an extra set of tires. Right now, a truck is a 2003. Uh, it's got 14 uh, years on it, 112,000 miles. Hey, Don, could I ask you one more question? Uh, is this going to have all the, is, it's going to be completely fitted with uh, the toolboxes like it is now? Yes. Uh, what we're looking at is a three-quarter ton, 4 by 4 2 by 4 with an aluminum body um, as it won't rust like the steel bodies would. Yep. Yep. What's the difference in price between the two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive, please? Uh, the price range on the two-wheel drives. Uh, we have a price of twenty-nine nine twenty, a price of thirty-two four twenty-one, and a price of thirty-seven thousand. That's an eight-foot aluminum body uh, on a three-quarter ton two-wheel drive. The four by four again is a three-quarter ton. Um, it is. The, the prices range from 33,448 uh, to 34,632 to 35,455. So it's about at the low end, it's four thousand dollars. Are you planning on outfitting the truck with uh, a plow? We are we are planning on getting a four by four that is plow ready. We are not. Um, planning on putting a plow on it. One of the considerations is that right now the, uh, the, the superintendent plows the access road to the wells when a town highway vehicle becomes available. We think that it might be make more sense to have our own vehicle. It's working right now that way. It's okay, but at some point in the future it may not. <clears throat> yeah, it should have been selectman's meeting two weeks ago. Um, so uh, the other question I have is, you said it's an emergency vehicle. So this, this is this a daily driver or an emergency vehicle? It's a daily driver, but will be used, expected to be used as an emergency vehicle in a snowstorm or in a hurricane okay. or in that kind of a situation. And what are we going to do with a truck that has only 112,000 miles on it? Is there, are there major repairs that need to be done right now with that? It does need repair uh, and the utility body is in tough shape. It'll be, tr it'll be turned in. All right, thank you. Yep. 
anything else? Okay. All in favor of the transfer of $39,000, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. All right. Uh, 24. Uh, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money for the road construction and reconstruction account or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to transfer $35,000 from stabilization to fund the road construction and reconstruction account. Second. Okay. And that is, that's money that's coming out of the 114900 also. All right, um, any discussion on this one? I need a, I'm gonna need a two thirds vote, so let's see how it goes. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Can we declare it unanimous, Mr. Town Clerk, and get away with it, or do we need a count? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, Mr. Town Clerk wants a count, so it's, you've been sitting for quite a while. So would you please stand up, and all those in favor, we had one other one. Okay, that looks kind of odd. <laughs> Do you, are you by yourself there, Mr. Cleveland? Okay. Everybody's standing, so I don't know who we're counting. Right. <laughs> We need a count. Um, I can do a fast count. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 25, 30. I got 43. Anybody opposed? Uh, I think we're sitting. 43 to 0. Twenty-five, we passed over. Twenty-six. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow. Uh, a sum of money to replace the 1997 Ford, ton, Ford one-ton okay. pickup truck or take any action relative thereto. Who has this one? Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to transfer $58,900 from stabilization to replace the 1997 Ford one-ton truck. Second. Some discussion? <laughs> Mr. Holcraft, you good? All right, I'll start it off. Uh, this truck was replaced back in uh, 012. Uh, we got a new truck and oh, we voted, I think it was the uh, special meeting in 012. We ended up with the truck in 013. Um, we replaced it already once. We used to have two one-ton trucks. Now we got three one-ton trucks, and they want to replace this one. Um, we were told back in 012 that we were going to have this truck replaced. We weren't going to keep a third one. So now we're going to replace this truck again. We don't need three one-ton trucks in this town. I mean, we got three full-time guys down. Everybody's going to have a truck. Um, it was going to go to the cemetery, and that never materialized. Um, so just to let you know, you can just vote how you want, but I'm just giving you a little history here that this truck was replaced. We voted. They told us it was going to be replaced and junked, and now uh, we're doing this again five years later. So just a little history there for you all. Thank you. Okay. Ken Cleveland, I'm, I was uh, thought the last time that we talked about this that the older truck being replaced was going to go to the cemetery commission. Yeah, yeah. You got to talk into the microphone. Oh, I thought the uh, the, the replaced that the one that replaced him was supposed to go to the cemetery commission. Who wants to respond? Okay, we got specific to this truck, uh, Mr. Moderator. That in fact, because of its condition, and I'll use that word, um, 
that it would not, and a conversation with the cemetery department was held that, in fact, it would be inappropriate to, have, to take this vehicle because of its condition. If I remember the meeting when we bought this, when we bought the current newest one ton, there were two articles in that town meeting. One was to buy a new vehicle, one was to put money into the vehicle we're discussing right now. Both of those motions passed. So we never voted to get rid of it. We voted to repair it. We also buy, voted to buy a new vehicle. So that's what actually happened. Well, I mean. Okay. Yeah. Who, but who's got the question? Yeah, uh, One of you. No, when we took the vote, it was to be it was to be replaced. Last year, we voted to put money into the '97, which we voted on. This truck was supposed to go down to the cemetery. It was not supposed to be. We were supposed to be replaced. And here we are again, five years later. And if the truck was if the truck was not good for the cemetery five years ago, you're still using it. So. If it's not worthy for the cemetery, but you guys have been using it on the road for five years, so that doesn't make sense. Um, so it's up to, you know, if we want to spend, and we shouldn't have to be taking this money out of stabilization. It's not an urgent thing at this time to replace the truck. They already got two others down here, plus this one. What's the urgency to take money out of stabilization when we don't need to do it? We well, should get a camera for the fire department first before we do this. Mr. Moderator? Yes. Mr. Moderator, um, would it be possible for the highway superintendent to share the number of emergency operators beyond the three people that are the full timers at the highway department so that it can be understood by the townspeople how many vehicles we sometimes have to put on the road in order to service both the public and private ways? While he's making his way up here, <laughs> which may take a moment. We can't have it both ways. We can't get complimented by every one of our neighbors. You can't drive on 148, either north or south, at 2 in the morning with your headlights off and know immediately when you go in another town because our highway department does a good job and then question why they need the tools to do the job. So you want the roads maintained like this, great. If you don't want to get them the tools to do it, move to North Brookfield. Uh, before, Mr. Chaffee, were you going to respond to something in, before we... I can. I Good. Hand. Go ahead. <clears throat> well, what it's known is we've got to have three one-tons on the road during the winter time for plowing. We've got to keep the police station opened up and the fire station now. The police station, they called. Last winter, they called a couple times because it wasn't plowed enough, so we had to put another truck on during one of the big storms. So... Don't know what to say. What's, how many, how many yeah. personnel? Okay. Do you have? Like, that's what's asking. Yeah. Uh, just. Who's? Mr. Moderator. Yes. I'd like the highway superintendent to answer the question that Ms. Coughlin had proposed as to how many employees, the emergency employees are. We have roughly six. Six emergency employees? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, the other thing I just wanted to note is I understand what Peter's point is as far as keeping the roads clean, and you know, and that's all well and good. I think a lot of that, you know, we, they do a great job, but uh, they're, they're doing it right now um, without a brand new truck. So I understand it needs repairs and everything, but I just uh, with us, I, to me, it's a free cash thing at the moment. You know, but we don't have the free cash. I think if we t table this item and then vote it when we have money, it might be a better option, my opinion. Go, Dave. Okay. I have a question, a clarification on free cash. Uh, we have 600,000 plus in free cash. Stabilization. Stabilization. What's the um, average amount the state recommends for free cash, and do we meet that percentage, or are we above it? So we are. So we are, Mr. Moderator. Yep. So the the state recommends not less than five percent of your operating budget. Um, so currently, I think that sits at what about six point seven eight percent. 
uh, with withdrawing the hundred and fourteen thousand dollars will still leave us over that five percent threshold that they recommend Mr. Olcraft, you get your hand up? Or? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go could, ahead. Could um, Kerry, do you know what our bond rating is right now? Because that that uh, does that affects the stabilization and, and borrowing money for our police station and all that stuff. Do you know what the bond rating is right now? Okay. All right. I'd like to make another point. Um, North Brookfield has double the roads that we have. We got 40. They got about 82. They have only two one tons and they have less trucks. And this town has only got 40 roads. I mean, we're going to get we're going to get we're going to get truck heavy here, equipment heavy, and they're going to be spending more and more and more time maintaining these trucks. I mean, we used to have only one ton. Now we got two tons. Now we're going to have three one tons. I mean, when when is enough? I guess is the question here. Uh, Art J on East Main Street. I understand the point between North Brookfield and Brookfield. But anybody in Brookfield who has ever traveled the roads in North Brookfield know why they're in Brookfield. I'm Cindy Thompson. I'm the secretary for the highway department. I'm the former secretary for the North Brookfield Highway Department. <laughs> North Brookfield has private contractors who plow most of their smaller roads down around the lake. We don't do that. The other reason that maybe you're curious about why we've kept this truck running so long and it can't go to the cemetery, we can put it on a battery charger in the garage. The truck can't sit outside. I've been forbidden from driving that truck. That truck is not safe. It needs to be replaced. Move the question. OK. Uh, I get yeah, one more. Um, he had his hand up for a while, so he gets it, and then we'll go to move the question. So, Mr. Yes. Yes. Cindy, you told us, it's funny, you said the same thing five years ago about the truck had to be replaced, and here we are again, you're telling us the same story again. And you put a lot of money into it, we changed transmissions in it. I mean, the thing should have been taken down to the cemetery, because they could use it down there. Mr. Moderator, move yes. the question. So, all right, thank you. Okay. Motion to move the question. All those in favor of ending debate, Please say aye. Aye. All those opposed to ending debate, say no. Okay, that's the end of debate. All those in, I need a two-thirds. And you're going to make them stand? It? Okay. Um, all those in favor of the transfer from stabilization, would you please stand? I'm counting them, Kenny. Don't worry about it. I got it. OK. All those opposed? One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. OK, nine opposed. Forty, forty-four yes, nine no, which is more than the two-thirds needed. Okay. Um, 27. <coughs> to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to purchase welding, air, recycler, and storage cabinets for flammable liquids or take any action relative thereto. Who's got this one? Mr. Moderator? Yes, ma'am. I move to the town vote to transfer $6,000 from stabilization to purchase welding, air recycler, and storage cabinets for safe flammable liquids. Uh, this is another safety that we have to do. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded for this transfer. Any discussion here? Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please stand. <laughs> 43, okay. All those opposed? Six. 
zero, okay? Uh, 28, <clears throat> to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or from available funds. Mr. Mulberry, could you please speak into the microphone, please? Again, okay. I'm, I'm getting tired. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate a transfer from available funds, a sum of money, to increase the highway department administrative assistant hours from 20 hours per week to 24 hours per week, or take any action relative thereto. Who's got Mr. this one? Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate $3,470 to increase the highway department administrative assistant hours from 20 hours per week to 24 hours a week. Second. Second. Time out. <clears throat> I got a better reason. Um, we just want to clarify something. Um, this will be in addition to the line item that we voted earlier. That's correct. Okay. All right. Now I'll take discussion. And Mr. R Mr. Moderator, the, the idea of uh, increasing the hours from 20 to 24 hours, I'll give you the example. Our example this week is that our open space and recreation plan needs to be updated. With that document not updated, if you were to go to the Department of Conservation and ask for a grant, you're not going to get it approved because they want an up-to-date open space re recreation plan. What Cindy has done most recently is to put together a coalition where the advance information to get the open space plan on, on track such that July, a year from now, we will have that document in place so that we can apply for grants through DCS. Uh, would be in place. So what, what, what this four hours to me means is that Cindy's able to spend the time coordinating the activity around open space. Many of you have already received letters asking for your support to join into that activity to have get on a plan such that in February we can accept an $8,000 grant such that we can then turn around to have the grant to DC, uh, the approval of DC, uh, DCS by uh, July of next year. You all know me from the, uh, the Indian or campground activity. Uh, that campground activity, once we finish proving that the Indians are actually buried there, and, and they are, the archaeological survey was completed a couple of weeks ago, and yes, there are more burial, burials than we thought. We're going to have to do something about that by having sitting in a position of having additional hours to help with those kinds of grants, we can do additional. The, this goes well be. The, these are just kind of the things that I know about. I, I look to Cindy to do the highway stuff. I looked over the last few years as to the grants that she's been able to capture for the town. We're talking in excess of $2 million per year. And so with that, um, if she says she needs four extra hours a week to continue to, on that track of having the several millions of dollars available to the town at no cost, uh, I think it's well worth the investment. Thank you. All right, any other? Could, I'd yep. like to amend that. Sure. <clears throat> okay. I would, um, <clears throat> okay. I move that the town vote to transfer, <clears throat> excuse me, from stabilization the amount of $3,470 to increase the highway department's administrative assistant hours from 20 to 24 hours a week. No, you should raise it appropriately. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Second. The, the difference here was um, Linda's uh, amendment to have it come from stabilization. That was a significant difference. The, we got some, yep, Mr. Holcraft. Yeah, you know, we're talking about these articles here. Is this, why is this one being put on and it's not an emergency and it's not a safety factor? Can you tell me why that's put on? Why we're, go, why we're discussing that now? I mean, Who if we're going to keep doing this, we might as well vote in the uh, camera for the fire department. Because it wants to tackle, okay? July 1st is right around the corner and we've got to get, get in position. And, and again, I'll only use the open space plan as the example, we have to get in position to be able to capture those dollars. And so certainly we could wait till the fall and then we get off track of being able to be ready to get an $8,000 grant in February. 
And, and again, what, what we're talking about through this summer and into the fall is to really solicit town and town input into your open space plan and recreational plan. It's not just developing a, plan, a document and then throwing it up before you. It's actually doing the research ahead of time. Thank you. Okay. I just have a question to the selectmen, because I'm, I'm bothered by the fact that you're taking $3,000 for a wage increase out of stabilization, which is meant to be a you know safety account to pay for primarily capital expenditures. I don't understand why this doesn't come as a raise in appropriation. Are we that close to the levy limit? Uh, 100,000 under. We, uh, Mr. Can Cook. I, can I amend the motion then? No, Mr. Mr. Cook, I had explained earlier when we met with the Department of Revenue yesterday that they suggested that everything come out of the stabilization account because we don't know right now what the finances of the town are. I, uh, and, and we will put all of this money back in, in the fall. I, again, I, with all due respect to the Department of Revenue, I understand there's some issues here. $3,000 off raise and appropriate is not, it's not like you're taking forty or $50,000. I'm also bothered by this whole idea that we're going to put back money in stabilization. One thing we should be doing is using free cash to lower the tax rate. And free cash should be used primarily to pay for something like this and some of the expenses, like buying cameras. So I, get, I just, I'm beginning to question the financial procedures here. Okay, before... Um, Harry has... Yeah. I just want to address the uh, free cash. I just want to address the free cash issue. Um, I, I think you misunderstood. We do not have free cash certified, which is why we are dipping into stabilization. Can I respond okay. to that? Absolutely. I do understand. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So I have a question before you get on to that. Do you want to make an amendment to this to, to yes, raise an appropriate I before I, we're going to have too many things flying around here? Yeah, I do want to make a motion. This so we raise an appropriate this sum of money. All right. Is there a second to that? Second. Okay. Isn't there an amendment on the so, floor already? So, now, you had another question, and I'll let you... No, I'm, I'm going to respond. You know, I'm a former chairman of the Tantastical School Committee. I know what free cash is, and I know generally financial accounting procedures in municipalities. This is not a good move. Mr. Holcraft. I was at that DOR meeting um, the other day, and uh, they definitely told us not to use any of this money unless it was absolutely necessary. I was at that meeting. I listened to them. So I'm going to challenge Linda what she said, and I'm going to be nice, and I'm not going to say anything. But they said only, only what was important. And this is definitely not important at this time. They, may, I finish, right? may I finish, please? Thank you. We had a treasurer working in this town for 24 hours, doing the whole town for 24 hours. Now we're going to have a, a secretary down at the highway. I know she's writing grants, and she does a great job down there, but when it, are we going to stop? It was started off at 10 hours. Then it went to 12, 15. Now it's up to 20, 24. Do I hear 28 next year? How about 30? When is this going to stop? You're talking 100 hours a month for doing all the work. North Brookfield has a, a secretary, and she's not doing grants. And she's working, she's working 10 hours, and West Brookfield's working 10, too. So just a little, just a little information for you all. Okay, before we, before we go too far, um, let's try and focus on where the money is coming from. So we have a, an amendment before us to raise and appropriate this money. So let's try and get that part of the discussion out of the way, whether it's going to be raise and appropriate or whatever it's going to be, and then we can get to the substance of the article with with the time so any discussion i want just want to stay with the amendment here whether we raise an appropriate or not any 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 other comments or questions on that uh, mr moderator just for the purposes of of keeping things straight now so we have an amendment to amend the amendment that was made by Ms. Lincoln to the original motion. And that's as far as we that's, can go. So we right. got two amendments. We gotta we gotta so start knocking them off. The most recent amendment here now. And then we'll be if that passes, we'll be voting on or discussing and voting on the amended amendment. 
<laughs> and if not, then we'll be voting on the unamended amendment. You got it. Okay. <laughs> yep. I'm okay. That's great. <laughs> Raise and appropriate. Any other comments? <laughs> I just said one. I, we're a hundred thousand dollars short of the levy limit, based on what we know. Correct? Yes. Correct. You got to ask somebody. Uh, who's who's going to answer for him? Gonna he want, he's, it? he's saying we're about a hundred thousand yeah, dollars on the levy. Yeah, that's what I was told. We're about a hundred okay. hundred. So after we pay for this, we'll only be net. We'll be ninety-seven thousand dollars still within this threshold of the two and a half limit. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor of approving that amendment to read, raise and appropriate, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. 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 Okay, you got to get up and you got to count them, Kenny. Get somebody else to help you. All those in favor of the amendment, raising and appropriating, please stand up. What, what's the numbers? We got eight down here, four and four. Oh, that's it. Okay. All those opposed to the amendment, please stand. Did you count the front, Mr. No, I don't get the vote unless it's a tie. No, no, no. Did you count the people at the front table? No, I don't count anybody. Okay, I didn't count those. So there was... Can we switch it again? Everybody has stood up here. Let's do it. And they're going to add this to the eight. Huh. We have seventeen total. Okay, all those opposed to the amendment, would you please stand? Okay, the amendment is defeated. So now we're back to um, getting taking the money from stabilization. So let's try and deal with that part of the issue um, before we go any further. All those in favor, we've done we've we've knocked out one. We can, there's only so many choices. We got to vote something. Um, all those in favor of taking it from stabilization, would you please stand? I need my counters, as we're going to make sure. How many? 39. 39, okay. All those opposed to taking it from stabilization, would you please stand? total. Okay. So the motion is to t transfer the money, um, the $3,470 from stabilization. All right. Now we can sort of focus on whether or not we're, we're transferring that money or not. Any other discussion? 
Yeah, that's what I just said. Yeah. Yep. Okay. If not, um, all those in favor of the motion to transfer from stabilization of three thousand four hundred and seventy dollars to add an additional four hours a week. Would you please stand? That was the amendment to the amendment. What's that? I thought we just voted on. No, we t we went through the amendments. Right. So that's that's where we're getting the money. Now we got to vote if we're going to do it or not. So all those in favor of funding it for at an additional $3,470. I need you to stand. And my counters are back doing their work. Walk back too. Mr. Snyder. 34. Okay, 34 in favor. All those opposed to uh, taking it from stabilization, would you please stand? Thirty-four to five it passes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, we've got to do Twenty-nine. This we've passed over. Thirty. Thirty. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money for two cruiser radios and two portable radios huh? that are necessary. No, 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 no. You're on. Uh, you're right. Okay. Article 30. Article 30. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to supply six highway employees, three full time, one seasonal, two emergency operators, with personal protective equipment or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to transfer from stabilization the sum of $8,736 to purchase six sets of personal protective equipment for highway employees. And this is also for safety purposes. Second. Right. Mr. Cook. Mr. Moderator, I move we amend this motion, take that money, uh, raise an appropriate that money. Okay. I need a second. Can I discuss it? Or? Yeah, do the second. Yeah. You need a second before you can discuss. I'll second for discussion. Okay. Um, the advisory received a list from Highway of um, equipment that they would like this money to cover. And out of the two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, three, twelve items that I have here, probably half of them anyway, are already provided for within the highway expense budget and have been for a while. So number one, we feel this, this um, is inflated. Um, it seems also that they're adding in things that they didn't have before and I don't understand why all of a sudden they would want them, uh, us to pay for them. Um, such as prescription safety glasses, just being one example. Um, however, um, we did discuss, you know, the possibility of, you know, giving allowances for the purchase of certain things and then anything above and beyond, they could do that. But in any case, I did get a second um, quote from another company because Highway had only gotten one. And I think in the interest of um, financial... Um, doing your due diligence um, and checking for prices and that sort of thing, more than one list should be gotten. And the quote that I got from another company, taking out the, fact, uh, the items that are already provided for, I come to a figure of about $3,500 rather than 8700 
and $36. So, and I did, um, you know, this is the kind of thing that we've known for a while now that they wanted these things. So I do think that there was ample opportunity to get a second quote from another company and it, and it wasn't done. So having worked in the past with a company that I knew um, specialized in these things, I, I reached out to them and had them submit one for me. So just to give you an example. Um, so I, we just think, a majority of us think that this is overinflated. I'm not going to speak to the merits of this, um, but I do, I'm, I do think we need to think about how we're going to pay for this. I do understand the situation. We don't know our total amount of free cash. But again, we're not anywhere near close to the levy limit. I think it's poor fiscal management practices not to take some of money, regardless of the merits of this, and not raise an appropriate. You're nowhere near the levy limit. And it's just to start taking little stuff like this, even in your current circumstance, is just poor, poor fiscal management, which this town has done a lot for the past several years, by the way, in my opinion. Yeah. So the vote is to amend it. Mr. Moderator, uh, the one recommendation of why it should be coming from stabilization versus raise an appropriate, and, and I understand Mr. Cook's point that it's not a huge sum of money, but it, for the most part, while there will be replacements in the future, is a one-time expense. So normally we would fund it from free cash. If we're going to do the replacement of stabilization from free cash once it's certified, it actually does follow a certain logic to go ahead and pay for it out of stabilization and then uh, replenish it once we have our free cash. So there is some logic there. Let me speak to the counter logic. By not taking out a raise and appropriate, you're losing a lot bigger amount to use under your levy limit. So therefore, you're playing a little bit of a game here. By taking it out of stabilization, you're leaving yourself a lot more room, wiggle room, to pay for other stuff. And that's not very good fiscal management, because if you're trying to hold down expenses and make smart choices as to how to spend your dollars, you're not doing that. You're avoiding that. You're avoiding discussion down the road by taking stuff out of stabilization. And as I said earlier, I think what this town needs to do more of is use free cash to lower the tax rate. Just move the question on the amendment. Uh, yeah, Mrs. Lincoln has been waiting patiently, so we'll. Oh, we're all set. Oh, <clears throat> okay. Um, the first thing we're doing is working on the amendment to take the, to raise and appropriate the money. So, all those in favor of raising and appropriating this item, would you please stand? Okay, all those opposed to raising and appropriating it, please stand. All right, sit down. Uh, all right, so now we're back to taking the money from stabilization. That's what the question's going to be. Okay? I would like to make a motion to amend the amount yep, to $3,500. Okay. The motion is made to amend that amount to read $3,500. Could we please hear from Herb Jaffe on why he needs this product? I really don't want to come up here, but... Bias report's the one that started it, so ask them. No, I want you to defend it. They they started the whole baloney about safety stuff, and you know I got the list here, so. I know, but I want you to. Just it's four. It's one thousand four hundred and eighty-six dollars per person that it's going to cost. You know the bias board started it, so mm -hmm. now they got now the town's got to take and uh, take care of it. Thank you. 
I don't, I don't know about who started it, and I don't, I don't think that you know. I haven't started something with someone since I was on the playground, Harvey. Yep. Uh, but anyway, um, I think amending it though on the floor is a good idea, especially since, um, as Marie pointed out, uh, a lot of these things are already covered in your budget, uh, and I don't understand. Uh, according to this, it says that it's for uh, three full-time, one seasonal, and two emergency operators. You told us earlier you had six emergency operators. So why are you not going to cover four of your guys? Not going to cover them all because I'm not. I don't have the emergency operators in there all at the same time. I got them in. I got. So, good. I got extra people on the list if I need them. That's what it is. I asked earlier how many emergency operators you had working that you needed the extra truck for. You said six. How many I had? Right. Oh, so Two different that's. Things. So that's how many people you have on on, on, on speed dial. On a call list. Gotcha. All right. Okay. Any anybody else with questions? I thought yep. the question okay. was moved. No, I had no my he hand had his up. hand up. Um, I the advisory board didn't bring this up. I brought this to the selectmen just because for the I saw that the um, highway department were not wearing hard hats, and I drove by and the pieces were bouncing off out of the road, and I just went to, to tell the selectmen that I think the highway should have hard hats just for the safety of their own guys. It wasn't to start any ruckus here, and now it's it's blown up into this, which is fine, but the pr the price that we priced out it comes to about thirty five hundred because a lot of this stuff is already in the budget expense account for the highway. Gloves, vest, their bomber jackets are taken to the cleaners, safety glasses. All this stuff is in the same list that totals 8,000 something here, whatever it is. Um, it's already in there. So it's not a matter of trying not to do what's right here. I was trying to just look out for the protection of our guys and it's got into this. But a 3,500 should cover all these guys with, what, with the um, figures that we've gotten. Okay. Um, I have two comments to make. One is that if I understood Marie correctly, the $3,500 figure that she came up to is not using all the equipment that Herb requested. So it's not an apples to apples figure. That's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say is Herb is the superintendent highway department. I think he's much more qualified to determine what the highway department needs than the advisory board is and that we should not pass this, what are we doing? <laughs> Amendment to the question. Okay, okay, so you missed the whole thing I just said. Half Ms. Moderator, of point of order. Yeah. We had a motion that we were going to pass. Uh, we were going to move the question. I had my hand up, sir. You're right. Who who okay. made the motion to move the question? I'll make, I'll, I'll make it again. You're right. It I didn't hear it. I made it on the amendment, so this is What's technically. That? I made it technically on the amendment, but now I'll make it again on the motion. So we haven't That's passed it. the amendment yet. We haven't right. passed the amendment. We're, no, we're the moving. Amendment, so. We're moving the question here. He was talking about the, the, the issue. He made the motion. I let the two people speak. That ends it. Then you know we we got to move on. Um, we're voting on the amendment, which is three thousand five hundred dollars. If you're in favor of amending it to read three thousand five hundred dollars, I want you to stand. And the list is here if anybody wants to see it. If. <laughs> That's it? Okay. If you're opposed to the $3,500, I need you to stand. Okay. So the 3500 is defeated. So now we're still back to um, where we started. Uh, Stabilization at transferring, eight, Transferring $8,736 from stabilization. Stabilization. Is that it? Okay. All those in favor of the motion, would you please stand and I will do a count. Three, seven, 
10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 34. We're losing a few people. Okay. All those opposed to it, please stand. Four. Okay. You got that? 34 to four. Come on, you wanted to count here. Get, keep, keep up with me. <laughs> That's your first mistake. All right. Article 31, to see if the town will borrow, transfer. We, we put a hold on, Don. What's that? We put a hold on because of yeah. feedback. Yeah, 31. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm reading it. Oh. Isn't that what I said? Thank you, Mr. I mean, Lord. I'm getting tired and I know I'm losing it, but. Okay, Article 31. To see if the town will borrow, transfer, or raise, and appropriate a sum of money to condemn and raise up three uninhabitable buildings in the town of Brookfield or take any action relative thereto. So I don't know how we're gonna deal with this one, but let's let's try it. Hey, like I said, I'm Roger Karen. I'll try and keep this short. I know it's been a long night for everyone. So I'm going to butter to a house on South Maple Street that burnt on uh, January of this year. So the fire department uh, reported to a fire. Um, they were able to put it out. However, the house was severely damaged. So the roof is completely burnt through. The walls are partially burnt through uh, on all four walls. And there's debris scattered about the entire property. So since January, there's been multiple collapses of the house um, of the burnt sections of the house falling to the ground. There's been uh, stray cats that have moved into the neighborhood. Um, so this is really a, a, not only a nuisance item, but this is a, certainly a safety item. I think the town has, a, uh, has an obligation to keep our city safe um, for its citizens. And normally I would say the obligation for the, to take care of this property would be for the owners. Unfortunately for this particular property, um, I checked with our tax collector, the owners of record have been dead or deceased since the mid 80s. So their, their uh, son has been living there for probably 20 or so years. Um, he does not have the means to do anything with the home and he doesn't have the, the, uh, the authority either. So they, uh, um, and like I said, the, the parents are deceased. The, uh, uh, the daughter who was the executor is also deceased. Um, the son who had been living there does not have the means to do anything with it. Now the property is in disarray, it's unsafe. I feel the town needs to do something um, to this. There is no other responsible party um, that could take any actions here. Mr. Moderator. Okay, before, before we go too far, I need someone, it, well, I need a, a motion for a dollar amount. And if we don't get that, then the no, discussion's over. Okay, Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to trans, uh, no, to, to take from stabilization a sum of $9,000 for the removal of <laughs> two uninhabitable bu buildings in the town of Brookfield. Second. Okay. The idea would be that we would at least take two buildings down. Okay. All right, Mr. Holcraft, you're next. Um, I get a question on the legal process. Maybe Jeff can cue us in on this. Has has the town gone through the legal process of taking someone's property that's in limbo um, on both of these properties? I want to know if we're going about it the right way and if have we met all the steps before we uh, take action on these properties. Through, through you, Mr. Moderator, as you guys know, my name is Jeffrey Blake. I'm here from KP Lawyer Town Council. I, I, I can't really speak to whether or not these two individual properties are in the process, but what I can tell you is there is a legal process that would have to be followed before the town can just go in and raise a building that's owned by a, a private party. Uh, you've indicated that there is actually a person living in there, so it's not a vacant building. Well, so vacant now, obviously, yeah, so there was... Their son was living in there for a period of time. All right. Well, in, in any event, it can go through its board of health, it can go through its building commissioner, or it can go through its board of selectmen. But there is a legal process that needs to be, that needs to be taken care of before we can get the authority to go in and raise the building. So 
contacted uh, our health representative, asked him to condemn the property, and uh, he's indicated there is no funds to do anything. Can we hear it? What is it? <clears throat> what? You know, it's 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 so I, ha I have contacted the health department, um, and they've indicated that there is no funds available to take any actions. So I've asked them to condemn the property, and they said, hey, we don't have any money. Mr. Moderator? Yes. Could we ask the uh, Board of Health their recommendation? Chairman's here, too. <coughs> well, that's what we're doing tonight. We're raising the money to raise the buildings. Uh, to condemn the buildings, I've already spoken with the building inspector. There are actions that we can take to condemn them. The building inspector shared with us a fairly simple way to do it most uh, more recently, so we can take that action to condemn the building based on mass general law. So condemning the building isn't the issue. Raising the money is. That's the money. There's, that's what we're doing tonight. Okay, motion made and seconded to move the question. So it would be a transfer of nine thousand um, dollars from stabilization, stabilization to raise um, two or buildings? three buildings. Yes. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Unanimous. Okay. All right. Mr. Meyer, could I ask a question? Sure. Um, Mr. Snyder just said three buildings. He said two buildings before. Is it, which is it? Is it two or three buildings now? Two. Two of the it's three. It's two. We, okay. Okay. All right. Um, article 32. Um, to see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 4 of the General Bylaws Advisory Committee as follows. With new language to be adding to existing sections one and four in the bold type below, as listed in your book here. Okay, who's got this one? Okay, um, I move that the town vote to amend chapter, what is it, five? Four of the Mass General Laws Advisory Board as follows, with new language to be added to the existing sections. One and four noted in bold type. Section one, the, do I have to read the whole thing out? No, you can just say as, as if it's the same, just say as written. No, but we have some that's in bold here. So, yeah, as printed. What? As Linda, printed. before you, excuse me before you go. Is it the same as what's in the book? Yeah. Okay, then just say as written in oh, the book. As written in the book. Okay. Second. Okay. Okay, Mr. Holker. Uh, the, the advisory board also supports this, uh, despite what the um, warrant says. Okay. Can I speak to this? All right, Mr. Cook. I have a couple of concerns about how this is written. For one is, there is no penalty for someone who refuses to provide the information to the advisory board. Therefore, I think this should not be passed. In addition to which, under the Freedom of Information Act, you can probably get more information than required. So I, I'm going to move we pass over. I, this needs to be rewritten, in my view. This was... Okay, Mrs. Mrs. Lincoln. This was um, written by town council. <laughs> Mr. I, Cook. Um, there's a problem, and this I'm not picking on town council, having been on the bylaw committee. There are a lot of bylaws in this town, and there are no penalties or consequences for failing to follow them. So you can pass anything you want, but if there are no consequences or penalties, it's meaningless. <laughs> to me, I mean, what does this mean? You have a reasonable manner, reasonable time. That's something I expect a lawyer to write, because I'd have to go to the judge and adjudicate this. I don't want to do that. It costs town money. Um, however, provisions or the, you know, go ahead, it's just, it's very vague, and if you're going to do this, there should be a consequence for failure to follow it. Um, I do have a, qu I have a question too. Okay. 
Um, does town council have the bylaws in front of you by any chance? Yeah, they do. All right, chapter one, section five, amended 1996, criminal complaint and non-criminal disposition. Do those things apply? Do any of those apply? To this situation, here through you mr. moderator um, it does say here that the non-criminal method of disposition may also be used for violations of any rule or regulation of any municipal officer board or department which is subject to a specific penalty then it goes on to say without intending to limit the generality of the foregoing it is the intention of the of this provision that the following bylaws and sections of bylaws are to be included within the scope of this subsection. So it does appear that there is a, a an intent to allow any violation of the bylaw to be subject to a non-criminal disposition uh, the ticket. Mr. Moderator, may I ask the advisory committee why are we doing this article? What is the purpose? What what has brought about this article? Okay, Mr. Moderator, we may answer that. Yep. We did not put this in there. The selectmen put this in there, I believe. Linda, did you put this in? Yeah. Okay. Well. Mr. Moderator, I'd also like to respond yep. to, well, we to to this Karen? when you get a Karen. chance. Karen. Well, the reason that town council put it in, the reason we asked for something to be put in is because there was an issue with the advisory board requesting information from one of the financial okay. officers. And... According to town council, she thought that some of this wording here would kind of curb it so that if they asked for the information that it wouldn't interfere with their regular work time. At least that's what the second half of it is. So, uh, and I, uh, Mr. Moderator, may I? Yeah, okay, go right ahead and then we get Mr. Okay. Holcraft and... So, and and just, to, to just to clarify a, a little bit is that... Um, even with a Freedom of Information Act request, okay, because to to Mr. Cook, to Mr. Cook's point, a uh, Freedom of Information Act request, any citizen can get any of the documents that the advisory committee might use in the course of their business. Right. However, even in the Freedom of Information Act request, the the providing official is given the opportunity to define a timeline which is reasonable with their other duties that they're gonna to plan to provide that information. There was a, we were establishing a culture where if the person didn't get the response within a couple of hours, you're getting a second response. Or the next day, you're now you're getting two or three more requests from perhaps different members. It's something that, that we need to work on as a town is to establish some standardized methods of, of communicating between departments. So there's some other ways to to moderate this, but one of the reasons to make this change is to at least set the expectation that if there's a request, it'll get responded to, but, but part of that response might be, hey, I can't provide it until X date, okay, so that it's at least we're setting some sort of guideline there. Okay, Mr. Holcraft, then we'll come back to you and we'll... I'm, I'm, I can tell you personally firsthand, um, first of all, what, what Beth said is, is, is fine, but that's not the issue here. Uh, with the advisory board, we were denied, refused, and told, and intimidated not, we were not going to get information. So I went to the Public Information Act. I then went to the Secretary of State. They ordered the um, town and the tax collector to give us information within 10 days, and we got the information that we needed to verify what we were making decisions on as a board. But by no means was anybody on this board uh, 
It's going up to the town employees, you give us, we need the information in two hours or three hours. I've gone through the, to the town accountant on many, many occasions, and I've never demanded anything from her. I told her when she gets a chance, and she always came through when it was good for her. And I've never, ever demanded anything within a certain amount of hours, and no one else on the board has done that either. So this whole thing was brought up because we were refused information, and that's also against our bylaws, if you read the bylaws. So the selectmen took and spun this right out of control. <clears throat> but the language, the way it is, that's fine. We, we, we support it. Mr. Uh, uh, Linda's been waiting patiently. I don't know if she... Will you yield? I, I guess I'm... <laughs> kind of flabbergasted because I've heard um, a lot of animosity coming out of the finance committee tonight. And if they have an issue getting something, they should be going to the select board because ultimately that's where they go. Uh, and I don't understand all this going on because years ago, this isn't how it worked. When you asked for something, you got it within a reasonable amount of time. And you right. weren't trying to, you know, dictate how people did their jobs and and how they were going to do them and what they were going to do and you just simply said you know we need you to get three bids for this and and so on and so forth it's a whole lot of stuff but the advisory committee seems to have confused a lot of people in here tonight okay linda linda and was over here first and we'll switch back there i would like to uh, pass over this question that motion is already on the floor yeah. and it has been seconded yeah. Mr. Cook already made that. That's what I wanted to say. You're right. I've already made that. Yeah. Does that pass over? Yeah, you did. Okay, any other, any other discussion on passing it over? Other than the hour. <laughs> all right. All those in favor of passing over the article, would you please say aye? Aye. aye. All those opposed say no. No. The article is passed over. Um, Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, we're done. Thank you.